I made a little video a while back about Haskell, how I think it's an amazing language, and how I think we should all be paying attention to it. However, a lot of people seem to be saying that the tooling in Haskell is pretty poor. I'm here today to tell you that while in the past maybe that was the case, however now it has come a long way, and I in fact think the tooling in Haskell is good actually. Now where does this misconception come from? Well, there's a lot of different sources, however, the most common one I see pointed to these days is a video from TS Coding, a really great YouTuber whose videos I've watched tons of, but he made a video called Why I Don't Use Haskell Anymore, and I think it's a really good insight into kind of the reason why people think this way. And really a lot of it seems to be people pointing to this video, not so much people actually using Haskell nowadays. But this video came out a year ago, and while he does show his sentiments, he doesn't really explain his issues, besides talking about a project that he used to maintain and saying that it was a huge pain to maintain it. Now if we take a look at this project, it hasn't been touched in four years, and that's kind of a good sign as to what I'm talking about. Since the video is only a year old, you would immediately assume that this is probably still the case today. However, I think a lot of this feeling that he disliked Haskell's tooling comes from the fact that the project is pretty old and has faced a lot of the pains and growing issues that have happened in the Haskell community. Now rather than sitting here preaching to you guys about how Haskell's tooling has gotten so much better over the years, why don't I go ahead and show you guys and kind of uh, hang her back to the good old days when I talk a bit about what has changed. Um, if you are watching this video and you go through the whole thing and you think, oh, this guy's wrong, the tooling's still bad, or maybe right away you don't feel like watching the whole video and you just want to let me know in the comments, then go ahead and tell me what you think is bad about the tooling. I would love to hear your thoughts and maybe in the end I will see that there is an issue that I overlooked and I would love to address that in a future video or in the comment section. Now without any more delays, let's dig into the tooling. So we've just covered the intro and overview of kind of what we're going to be doing today. So let's go into the first bit of tooling, which is GHC up. So what is GHC up? GHC up is basically a program that is used similar to Rust up if you are familiar with Rust. It's basically for installing a bunch of different tools that we will be using. So that's GHC, Cabal. We won't really be using this in the video, HLS um, or Stack. So we'll mostly be using just Cabal and GHC. GHC is the compiler. Cabal is the build tool and dependency manager, and HLS is the Haskell language server. This will be basically all we're using is just these two, but uh, the actual setup is very simple for the other stuff. Now, what is Stack? Stack is basically a wrapper around Cabal, and the reason we're not going to be using Stack is because while you will see a lot of legacy projects using Stack, I don't think it's going to have as big of a place in the future as much as it does right now, mostly due to the fact that Stack basically exists to get around these old issues with Cabal known as Cabal Hill, uh, which we won't really go into, but I'll kind of talk about Stack a bit later on once we get into Cabal. Now, the install for Cabal is pretty simple. It's stated pretty much right here on the website. It's supported via WSL. It works with FreeBSD, macOS, and Linux. Now, what are the actual commands you can use with GHCup? Well, there's GHCup list, install, and set. So we're going to go ahead and just kind of go over these. So I'm just going to open up a terminal. So in the terminal, I can do ghcup list, which will kind of list the current state of all the things I have installed. So this will list all the available GHC versions, all the available Cabal versions, HLS, and stack versions. All right, and they give you kind of a bunch of overviews. So for GHC, it actually tells you which ones are compatible with the Haskell language server, since a lot of the Haskell language server versions don't actually work with a different GHC versions. And then Cabal is the other one we will be worrying about today. Now you have GHC install where you can do ghc up install ghc which will install the compiler and ghc up install cabal those are the only two commands you guys will need to do i already have these installed so we don't really need to worry about that and then you will want to set them and then you will want to set cabal as well and there we go so once you have them both set up you can actually start working with your project so first of all what is ghc ghc is the compiler and interpreter so once we've done ghc up set ghc we should have the ghc command available to us. When you just do set GHC, it will actually make your default GHC the one that you have configured for GHC up. And let's go ahead and make a little hello world just using GHC for now, just to kind of give you guys an example. Um, so really quickly, let's go ahead and just open this file right here. So this is a simple hello world file. And to run it right down here, I'm just going to run a command and that is run GHC and then hello.sh will run the file. So this is just a really easy way to run a little snippet just using GHC. So once you have GHC installed, you can use run GHC. For the rest of this video, we won't be interacting with GHC directly as much, 
But for the most part, we'll be using Cabal to kind of do all the work for us. So we don't really have to worry about it. We use GHC up to install GHC, make sure we have the right version of GHC. And then that's all we do that we really have to worry about. Now, what is Cabal? Cabal is basically a build tool and packaging system used for Haskell projects. Pretty straightforward. Um, this uses GHC to build our project and get to the dependencies, all that sort of stuff for us. Now, why Cabal? Well, Cabal is a pretty much the build tool. However, you will see Stack come up quite a lot. Stack is basically a wrapper around Cabal. It does a lot of different stuff. Really the big things that you want to keep in mind when it comes to Stack is that Stack uses, instead of Hackage, which is the general package repo for Haskell, uh, Stack instead uses uh, Stackage, which is basically a collection of different packages that are meant to be version compatible. Um, this is kind of mostly to get around the old versioning issues that people had with Cabal, which really just aren't there anymore. Um, and GHC up takes care of some of the other stuff that it does, like installing a specific GHC version for us. GHC up can do that, so that's not really worth worrying about. Um, and like I say down here, it's not really worth worrying about because any uh, project starting in 2023 just really doesn't seem to have much use for using Stack. So let's move on to Cabal. So I've just opened a shell over here on the right. So we're going to go ahead and create a new project using Cabal. So we'll make a directory called Cabal. We'll just call it practice. We'll cd to practice. And now that we are in practice, we can do Cabal init a dash i to do it interactively but there's not really too much interesting here that we'll be seeing then it'll ask should you generate a sample project and we'll just say yes going ahead we will see that it has generated all of these different files for us and so let's go ahead and take a look at them so just looking at this directory we will see that there is an app a source a changelog and a pack uh, practice.cabal so this is kind of where all of cabal's settings are so there is a library here called mylib which is just generated by default and an executable called practice which is kind of the main thing we're worrying worrying about here You'll see that there's build dependencies for both of them, uh, for our library and our executable. Um, now we'll mostly just be focusing on the executable for today. We won't worry about the actual library related stuff. Um, the other stuff that's here, just what is the main? The main is main.hs, which we can find in app, main.hs. And what we will see here is a pretty simple hello world. Now going back to our shell, inside of practice, we can do cabal run. And this will run our project. It takes quite a while on first go around. And there we go. So while that took a little while, we can see right here that it did a simple hello world. Now, what we want to do is we want to actually expand this and add some more functionality. So what's the simplest way we can add functionality? Well, we want to add a dependency. So we will install something called Scotty. Scotty is a pretty simple web framework. Um, you'll see it right here. This is basically the main layout. It's really simple. The main reason I'm choosing it is because it's simple and it's easy to understand for newcomers. So let's go ahead and add it as a dependency. So you'll see right here that you need to add it as a build, build dependency. So let's go ahead and do that. So we can do our go to our Cabal file. And in here, we can just add it right under our base. And we just need to add a comma there. And so now when we go back to our shell and we run cabal run, it will take a little bit, but it's just going to be installing our dependencies if needed for that specific version, which I believe I already have. So this is unnecessary amount of time to be sitting around here for. And there we go. We ran our hello world without issue. Now what we can go ahead and do is we can go to our main and we can actually change it. So let's go to our notes and i actually wrote a really simple hello world right here we will just go ahead and take the code from that and yeah the basically we're making a simple web server so now all we have to do is going back to our shell we can do cabal run let's give it a second it's going to compile it's going to link and then it will be running now we can see right here that it's running on port 3000 and if we go back down here, I've actually gone ahead and saved it. And so we're going to go to localhost 3000 slash hello. So we go ahead and open that. Just going to take a second. And there we go. We get hello world. And just looking at the source code main, uh, you'll see that basically all we're doing is we're getting the hello from the URL, getting that parameter, storing it in Word, producing HTML by concatenating the following strings. And this string right here for Word is just our hello down here pretty straightforward uh nothing if you're a little lost on it feel free to play around with this um, it's very simple it's basically the example code from the scotty repository 
Now moving on, we're going to want to start a REPL to kind of play around with things. Um, if you guys are more advanced or you're using the language server or something like that, then maybe this isn't necessary. But for people that are just starting, you're probably going to want to be able to play around with this. So if you're in Emacs, uh, you can actually start a Cabal REPL very easily by just doing Control C, Control Z. And it will go ahead and start it up. Actually, I think this might have already been started. So let me just start that one from scratch. And it will take a little bit. It will get everything installed. So if I hit one, you'll see that it won't actually do anything right away. But it will go ahead and get everything installed, get Cabal going for you. And then once it's ready to go, you'll be able to start interacting with it. So let's just give it a second to get all its stuff ready to go. All right, that took a little bit, uh, but now it's all ready to go. As you can see, I just tested it out really quick. So main will now run our server and we can actually do all the interactions that we would want. So we can add new functions um, and evaluate them right away. So let's go ahead and give a quick example. So test equal x equals one plus x. Uh, and then we can do control C, control L to evaluate that file. And then we can do test two and we get three. Pretty straightforward. And so that's how you can create a REPL in Emacs. Now, alternatively, if we go back to our shell and we use cd dot dot, uh, we can do cabal REPL. And this will take a little bit, just the same way that it took a while uh, with an Emacs, and it will set up a REPL for us to work with. And there we go. So now that we've got our project loaded, uh, you'll notice that if I do main, we will get an error. And so basically the reason for this is we have to load the file. So we'll do app slash, and this was kind of replaced by like how in Emacs I was saying you could do control C, control L to load the file. Well, this is what we're doing here. And now if we do main, we'll see that it's working we can do test one and we get two, kind of like we were expecting. And now we are finally on to the last step, which is making a lock file or a freeze file. And so these are pretty similar to what you'd see if you are used to using Node.js or Rust or basically anything that uses a lock file. And we can do this with Cabal Freeze. So if we go back to the shell, we quit from our REPL and we do Cabal Freeze and we do an LS you will see that we now have a freeze file. And this is basically the same thing as a lock file. So this resolves some of the issues that we used to get with Cabal where versions would be in conflict. And this basically makes it so that way we can ensure that our versions are going to be consistent. Then it gives us the exact version number that it was last working with. In addition, Cabal used to have an issue where it kind of just installed the versions all globally, which caused a lot of like dependency conflicts constantly. And so that's kind of why you'd run into Cabal Hill. And so that no longer is an issue. All the dependencies are now isolated as you would hope. And as you would see in most modern package managers, um, as well as having lock files or freeze files, in other words, um, you kind of get the perfect solution, not the perfect solution. It still isn't perfect, but I'd say personally that this is about as much as I would expect from most modern package managers these days, uh, far beyond what most people seem to make it sound like. I'd say this is a pretty modern setup. I'd say it solves most of the issues that you hear complaints about, specifically the sort of stuff that I assume, because I can't speak for TS coding, um, but I would assume is what he's talking about in his video. So thanks to all of you guys for watching this video. I hope this helped you guys get a good start to making your first Haskell project. I know it is far from the perfect tooling, but I'd say personally, this is a far cry from the idea of it being a horrible packaging system. I'm not trying to say it's perfect, but I'd say it's perfectly modern. Now, before we go, I wanted to give a big shout out and thank you to my supporters on Patreon and GitHub sponsors. You guys are doing the Lord's work. You're keeping me being able to even produce videos right now it's been really difficult just due to my current work and living situation uh but i try to do my best and you know it is how it is and i'll try and just keep the videos coming so big shout out to all of you guys i really appreciate it love you all and uh have a good day <music>